All right. So, so some things to consider when we're talking about strain gauges is, to, is um, hysteresis and dynamic response. So, um, so basically, loading and unloading of strain gauges. Um, so, if the gauge is properly installed, all right, um, it only hysteresis can be as low as only. 0.1% of your error, so very low in terms of the percent error, which is good. So no hysteresis is not a major issue if the strain gauge is properly installed. And a dynamic response for strain gauges can be as fast as one microsecond. So this is good for very fast measurements. So you can use strain gauges to measure things like vibrations um, and other fast loading conditions. Um, the analysis. Um, so so we talked a lot about how uh, the strain gauges work and how we can get uh, evaluate the change in resistance and correlate that with the strain um, but if we want to look at um, practical um, uh, evaluating uh, stress using the strain data um, so we need to determine three values of strain all right, in order to determine the state of stress at a given point. So to determine our two normal stresses, sigma x, sigma y, and our shear stress tau xy. Okay? So from these three strains, we can get three principal strains. Um, and then from the principal strains, we can get principal stress, which we can then use to predict whether or not a material will fail. All right, so to obtain these different strains, um, we need to use a strain gauge uh, rosette um, that or, uh, or biaxial strain gauge. So the biaxial strain gauges are shown on the left, all right, and then the uh, rosettes are shown on the right. Okay, so um, for <coughs> a um, for the strain gauge that's shown here, all right, all right, we have three strain gauges. One's at nine is that along the y-axis. One's along the x-axis and one is at a 45 degree angle. Um, if we have this type of arrangement for our strain gauges, um, we can use um, the following um, uh, method in order to determine our maximum and minimum normal stresses as well as the maximum uh, shear stress. So if we have our, if we set our first uh, strain equal to epsilon x, our second strain equal to the strain gauge that's at 45 degrees in the diagram above, and the third strain gauge along the y-axis. Right, we can plug them into these formulas that are shown below. Um, as long as we know the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio of the material, we can determine the maximum and minimum principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress. Um, so, um, pretty uh, pretty straightforward um, um, and then we can also determine what direction the maximum principal stress is by using this uh, formula down below for the angle phi alright so these equations I should, should be noted that they're only good for this specific configuration of strain gauge rosette where you're, all those strain gauges are offset by 45 degrees if you have other cases of um, um, if you have other uh, arrangements of uh, of uh, your strain gauges, you'll have different a different set of equations needs to be used to determine the maximum, minimum, and ma uh, principal stresses and the maximum shear stress.